Don't let their power fool you. Virtual tables are an easy way to query and update your data. End to end, two and a half minutes, you have a virtual table where it's pulling your data. And today Nathan shows what's new. This is brand new to this feature. We decided to add in something a little bit extra. And he answers that one burning question that we all have. What about licensing? Welcome to PowerCat Live. My name is Phil Toppers with the PowerCat team, and we're here with Nathan. Hey, Nathan. Hey, Phil. It's great to be back. Thanks it is for having so me. great to have you back. And for those of you watching, if you recognize the voice, you've probably been watching some of his hundreds of Dataverse videos. Say Dataverse for us, Nathan. Dataverse. Ah, go watch those videos. They're in the description. And we're going to talk about Dataverse a little bit today. We're going to talk about what used to be kind of an advanced feature, but no longer is virtual tables. What are virtual tables? Virtual tables are a really easy way to use data that's in other sources. The virtual table allows you to treat that data as if it's native in Dataverse, build apps and flows, and even just edit it directly in the table view without actually having to move it or duplicate it. Now for people that haven't touched virtual tables in a year plus, let's get it out there. Can I do create, read, update, delete? Absolutely. So now you have full CRUD capabilities on your data. The only thing that prevents you from having CRUD is if the source itself stops you. Mm. But otherwise, you know, you can have full CRUD to your content. So show us the magic. You're raising the bar, Nathan. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to do a demo here where we're connecting to SQL, where I have my products data, and I'm building a virtual table so that I can access that data and use it in some of my apps. Instead of just picking new table, I can pick new table from external source. Yeah, that's and that's going to let me build this virtual table. So once I do this, it's going to come up with a list of my connections because it knows I need a connection. Since right now we only support SQL and SharePoint, those are the only two listed. In the future, Excel will show up. Um, for anything else, you have to use the old format. So we're just doing this through the virtual connector providers right now. Mm -hmm. It's going to ask me for my credentials and my sure. information. We go back to my wizard here and I click refresh and now I see my connection. So now once it does that, and it j I move to the next phase, and it shows me all of my tables. So using my AAD credentials, it looks at SQL and says, here's every table you have the ability to access. And I'm going to pick my products table because that's where the data is. And then once this loads up, it's going to give me all of my table information. So I've got my table name and plural name, and I can change those. I've got a drop down here where I can pick any one of my string fields and use that as my primary field. And then you'll see here, I have all of the column names that are going to be present on the source. And you'll see that it has the column name from the source over here on the left, and then it has the suggested name and then the schema name to the right. Oh, and so we really can cool. look yeah. at any one of these. And the column names was something you could never edit before. Mm. This is brand new to this feature. We decided to add in something it a little bit a lot extra. Easier to use, yeah. And even up here at the top, there's a little button that says quick format. You know how sometimes you'll have the table dot something in front of the actual column name and table name? Well, if you click quick format, it's gonna take that out, strip it out for you automatically. So from here, we can go ahead and click next and I get a little preview screen, tells you how many columns are gonna be moved over. If I'm good with it, I can just go ahead and click finish and it's gonna process. This part takes about 90 seconds. And the funny thing is it's gonna seem like a long time because you're sitting here for 90 seconds. And the so much it faster seems like than before. Long time. Exactly, exactly. But because every other step before this was just like, look at the page, click, look at the page, click, type this, click. It seems a little long, but this is you know, worlds faster than it was. So that data we're looking at there, that is actually living in SQL Server right now. And if you update yes. it, your update will go back to SQL Server. Absolutely. Or if it gets updated in SQL and I refresh this page, I see the changes right. that happened there from some other source. And then from here, you just you can drop it into an app. You can build a flow on top of it. It's there for you to use like any other piece of Dataverse data. Now, we've, we've got, what, 900 plus connectors? Yeah. Why, yeah. <laughs> why do I need virtual tables? I've got connectors. Well, that's a great question. So with connectors, you end up having to have the individual connection to the source. So if you're using the SQL connector, you're connecting right to SQL. And when you're building an app on top of that, you have a section of the app or a form that's only interacting mm. with that particular connector. So you're mm. working with each one of them individually, and you're also mm. working with the APIs individually as well. Whereas we, you use Dataverse as a conduit for your virtual table, you're using just the straight Dataverse APIs. Dataverse is talking to SharePoint and talking to SQL. And you can actually integrate those tables together. So you can have a Dataverse table that has lookups directly to SharePoint and SQL at the exact same time, That's or two cool. different SQL environments to pull that data in and use it. 
Yeah, and that's nice. That's a point I hadn't thought of, right? The idea of having one API, the Dataverse API, to connect to really multiple systems. It's really nice convenience. Yeah. And so, Nathan, you know what comes next because you've been here before. If we listen to the internet, the internet is right now, after that demo, the internet's saying, what about licensing? What about licensing, Nathan? Licensing. So, because Dataverse is required for building a virtual table, sure. you do need to have a license with Dataverse on it, which means you have to have a paid Power Apps or Dynamics 365 license. Do you have a roadmap for this, or now do you just sit back and go on vacation? <laughs> I, I wish, but no, we we actually have a, we have a lot going on. So we've got the preview of this that's starting right now. People can use it for SQL. They can use it for SharePoint. Excel is coming out very soon. And then also in the future, we'll be looking to what other types of connectors we can use and bring in to virtual connector providers and make a part of this process. Now, the one source you know I have to ask about, right? The inception-like <laughs> scenario of Dataverse to Dataverse virtual tables. I didn't okay, hear you yes, mention it. I, uh, I did not mention it, but that is a common request. I hear it all the time. Every time I do a session, somebody brings it up. Um, so we are looking at that. But the point is that it's going to be coming sometime in the future. I just I just can't give a timeline. In the fullness of time? <laughs> in the fullness of time. I, I, I think that's trademarked now. I, <laughs> that, I don't know if, that may be trademarked now. Yes, in the fullness Some, of time. <laughs> someone just earned a nickel somewhere. Uh, so if... Uh, this looks really easy to use. If someone wants to try it out, what's the best re learning resource for them? So you can look for our online docs, which describe everything in detail with the steps, including some other information about, you know, things to watch out for. And a new resource is coming out where I'm building a virtual table course, which oh. walks you through end to end from a description of virtual tables, all the way through building them, integrating them with Dataverse and building apps on top of them. This is an online course, so it's virtual training, Nathan? Well, it will be available in a downloadable format with videos. I'm not sure if it will be a an e-learning course yet. You didn't take the bait of my dad joke, and I respect that. So, Nathan, <laughs> if, if, if people have other connectors besides the ones that you've already announced, uh, can they leave them in the comments for you? The comments are a great place to get that feedback to us because, you know, I love hearing that. Getting that stack rank information from customers directly really helps us determine what's next. Great. Thanks for being here, Nathan. Thanks a lot, Phil. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thanks for watching, everyone.